Hey guys, do Legit City here. Today in the game of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be going over a design for your wild critters. A lot of the times when you're exploring your asteroid, regardless of if you're doing the classic or spaced out start, you guys are going to run into these critters. Depending on the uh, biome mix that your asteroid has, you're going to run into different critters depending on the area you explore. But because of such, you guys will run into the critters, and the first thing that comes to mind is wrangling them, keeping them in a confined space, so that they can live through their wildlife in a controlled environment. This allows you to use them for resources. If the critter goes through its lifespan and dies, you get meat, depending on the critter, and other resources as well, depending on what it is. Things like the plug slug will passively give you a little bit of power, and you guys could always utilize the pips for planting natural plants if that's what you want to do. The one thing about this that all critters actually share is the fact that they could cramp themselves. One of the issues with cramping is that if a critter lays an egg within a confined space, they're going to require 12 tiles of space. Depending on which type of critter that is, it may require more or less in order for them to be spacious enough to allow them to roam wildly. Because of such, you guys have to create these boxes and only put a few critters in so that they could lay an egg and still be alive and not cramped. This allows you to get the maximum benefit from the wild critters. However, you end up creating these stacked rooms where you only have about two to three critters in going through its life cycle. And this might take up a lot of space, especially if you're playing on the spaced out DLC. Because of that, we have a solution for you guys today in order to make it so that all the critters could be in the same box uh, without having the debuffs or bad attributes of a confined space so that you could put a seemingly infinite amount of critters inside one location. Now the first thing you guys may want to think about is because the critters don't actually like going into the water, you guys might actually make a box like this so that the liquid lock impedes the critters from actually getting out. As you can see right there, it's actually doing a very bad job of doing so. Actually, all of these critters except for the shine bug is actually able to uh, navigate outside of the liquid lock. The Draco in this case could easily hop across, go along the side, same thing with the Pip, and of course the Sage Hash could do the same thing. Because of that, they are able to break free and the Liquid Lock does nothing. However, it does keep the Shine Bug from navigating outside of it. But because of such, this design is not good enough for what we want to accomplish. Now over here, it's actually the design that I want to show you guys. This design utilizes the one drop lock setup, as you can see it's only in a couple grams, to prevent the critters from exiting. Of course, we would use the doors to go in and out, and even if the doors were open with the dupe standing in it, as long as it's set to automatic, the critters are not going to be able to break free. That means that if you do have an idle do, no worries there. And of course, this actually prevents all the critters from exiting the box. The puffs, the navigation as you can see, the plug slug and the pip are not able to leave the box. And even the hatch. Now you guys may argue that because the hatch can't actually go past the uh, one drop, it's actually able to leave if we had some tiles there. Now that we added some tiles, we could click on the hatch and actually see that they're not able to navigate out still. Even with the tiles there, what's actually happening is, is that the top tile is forcing the water droplet to expand, having the same properties of a filled tile while actually maintaining only a few grams on said tile. This tricks the critters into thinking that it's a full tile of liquid, and because of how the pathing works in this game, they're actually not able to break through. Because of that, the one drop lock allows us to confine these critters in this space. That's actually all we need. However, there are a couple caveats about this design. Now, once we added the extra tiles, the critters that are able to walk along the side of the walls and ceilings are able to break out. The Draco, although it's not able to go back in, same thing with the Plug Slug, they were able to navigate outside of that. And for whatever reason, that's only enabled due to this tile being there. As a such, I recommend to not deviate from the design as the uh, Draco and Plug Slugs are able to break out of that design lock. Now because of such, you guys want to go back to the original design without the extra lip right there. Without the lip present, you're going to be able to see that the critters are still trapped and cannot do anything. Because of that, this design should not be deviated as any additional block may be able to ruin the design. Now of course this design has a couple of issues and that's due to the one drop lock mechanics. If your 
game is in a deep cycle count, or you have a lot of critters, or you're just experiencing a lot of lag in general, one of the issues that you run into is something called memory leak. Memory leak will actually cause some of the gases to push the one drop lock out. And because of such, it's actually recommended that you guys can use this design, but be weary of that. Make sure that your games isn't running for too long as the game will start making bad calculations, skipping ticks or breaks, causing the elements to do things that they're not actually supposed to be able to do. But because of such, that's a fair warning. And if you guys are worried about that, we have another design that's more of a safe bet. This design over here is going to be utilizing the same one drop lock setup. However, this is a safer approach as we use three tiles in order to stop the critter from going out. The active middle tile is the only thing we're worried about. And we also added air flows to the side so that the gases could pass through without forcing its way in or out. Of course, in the circumstance of a memory leak where they try to push down on the gas, it's actually not too bad as we allow the gas to move out so it should never be able to push down on it. And because of such, the one drop will always try to spread out left and right as well if the gases do push down and then move out. The airflow tiles allow us to have a little bit more liquid than usual and the middle tile expanded to the top tile right here is all we actually need. Clicking on the critters, it's the same effect as they are not able to break out. Now this design is not without its downsides. The design actually utilizes the open space right here so that you could tap into the extra room size. This means that you guys could use this design anywhere you guys want to, but the benefit only works if you guys don't have this room within a larger room, as the larger room will confine the amount of tiles we have, and the infinite or close to infinite storage is actually limited by the room size. The critters are going to require anywhere between 12 to 16 tiles per critter and egg. Depending on the type of critter it is, a uh, good rule of thumb would be to use 12 tiles per critter. And the amount of critters you're able to actually store in here is going to be the room size divided by that number. That being said, you guys run into a couple problems, especially with the critter drop-off. The critter drop-off will not actually be able to work in this case. So although this is the design you're looking for, it is not the final form. Over here, you could take any one of the other designs we showed you and then put the critter drop addition on top. Since we have this critter drop off in its own separate room with the automation to drop the critter into the room below it, we're actually able to wrangle all critters depending on what you guys want to set to and take them to this box, have the critter automation set to above zero with a simple automation line to these doors. When the critters appear in this tile space, they're going to fall into the bottom room, safely having them in a seemingly infinite storage. That means that all your critters could be in this 16 tile space and never run into the issue of cramped as long as the room size cumulatively is enough for the critters. Basically, the entire asteroid is going to count as the room space for this setup. And this is a great setup as you could put all your critters here. Of course, there are a couple caveats and that is pokey shells. Pokey shells will actually fight with other critters if the pokey shell egg is close enough to the pokey shell, they're going to tap into their motherly instincts and of course fight as if they were protecting the child from unknown dangers. Because of that, it is re recommended that you guys don't poop pokey shells in this box. Another thing is, is that although it works for most critters, it does not actually work for pakus as there's no bodies of water in here. Although Pakus can be stored with a uh, modified design, I'd probably just have to Paku in a separate box due to the fact that they are fish and required to be swimming in water. Whereas the other critters potentially drown, especially with the flying critters with the weird AI pathing bug where they want to reach the bottommost tile as much as possible, causing them to drown themselves, I will be reluctant to want the flying critters in the same box as the fish. Because of such, Pokus are not acceptable and Poke shells are should not be accepted as you want to make sure they do not accidentally just start fighting with the other critters. Now, of course, that being said, the one last caveat is that depending on the type of critter you have, you guys are going to have a different livable range. The critters inside the box, make sure you guys, they do survive in set temperature of that area. And if you guys 
have to. You guys might have to make a separate box with a similar design so that they could accommodate for some of the other critters, such as maybe a slickster, as the slicksters require a hotter top end temperature, and because it also affects the egg chance. But depending on the critter setup, this works for most critters that are going to be comfortable in the normal 30 degree range that your duplicates would probably be at naturally as well. But because of such, this is a great early game setup. No automation required. A lot of the building design really comes from the design, uh, the use of the liquid. You guys don't need a lot of tech here as this is literally tiles, door, automation wire, critter sensor, and a critter drop off. But guys, that has been the Critter Jail slash Menagerie setup. Depending on how you look at it, of course. If you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.